Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. Uh, we have been talking around TLFA. I know last week uh, there was no update from my side, and as I indicated, I was kind of busy attending Cisco Live. This year, the format was really interesting. You know, it was online, and all the sessions were pretty great actually. And I tend to attend most of the Cisco Live. Is, you know, uh, they do provide a lot of valuable information. And as I indicated, you know, uh, this year it was online and they usually post all the sessions. So all the sessions are online available. You could go ahead and explore. There were some pretty interesting topics that I felt around security and, you know, around 5G, how the SP architecture is changing. So there was a quite a few things, you know, uh, that have definitely I will be using in my day to day work. But anyway, coming back to our segment routing traffic engineering. So in the past episodes, we talked about TLFA. We did a lot of hands on around looking at TLFA. And we will continue in this episode also the discussion around TLFA because TLFA is a pretty large topic. It provides a lot of good, good things. And we know so far that with the help of TLFA, we are primarily looking for backup path, which are your fast reroute FRR. And those are pretty quick to convert because they are already available as a backup path. It's just a matter of, you know, switching from the field path to that backup path. So with the help of TLFA, we can go ahead and protect a link. We can go ahead and protect a failure from a node. If a certain node fails, we can avoid taking node or the neighbor node or something. So to continue our discussion, we're going to go ahead and talk about another concept, which is called SRLD. So this is a pretty interesting concept uh, when the SRLG, because it makes a few exemptions when you are trying to configure TLFA in the SRLG mode. So before we really deep dive into the hands-on of the SRLG, it is really important for us to understand what is SRLG, you know, how the things works in the SRLG. So let's go ahead and, you know, uh, take a look few things. But before we cut out, like we said earlier, the TLFA is all about, okay, hey, protecting protection so we can go ahead and protect link we can go ahead and protect node and we can go ahead and do something called srlg again as i said we'll go ahead and talk that about so there are a couple of things that can happen in terms of the atlfa we have been primarily working with the link failures so okay if there is a link fail our tlfa go and go ahead and figure it out in alternate path that's what we have seen also when you are doing the tlfa we can go ahead and say okay hey you know just if there is a node failure avoid that so now we're going to go ahead and explore what is this SRLG and then we'll come back to this particular slide. So let's go to some of Cisco's official documentation really to understand what is an SRLG. Before we do that again, TLFA provides link protection. Yep, that's what we know. I, this is all about doing a link protection at the same time, you know, making sure there are no loops with those links. Now, similarly, SRLG, SRLG stands for shared risk link groups. It is a group of link which potentially share similar risk and we'll explore what that this thing is actually mean so srlg really stands for shared risk link group it says okay it refers to a situation in which links in a network share common fiber or a common physical attribute that means probably a common fiber is being used to connect to two different sites or you know or some physical attribute like potentially i usually like to say okay let's say they are potentially connecting to the similar one same switch that connects to two different uh, type of node that means if that uh, switch fails there is a potential that you would lose connectivity to both the nodes or the common cable or the fiber that connect this node to let's say to that physical switch if that goes down that means okay even the node is still up but we have lost that common fiber that means there's a potential that we lose we might lose connectivity to both of those nodes actually so there is an exemption here. It is all about situation in which it says, okay, the links in a network share a common fiber. So what happens when they share that common fiber or common physical attribute? That means these links have a shared risk. That means they have a shared risk as we talked, okay, if the switch goes down, that means we will lose connectivity to both the nodes. So that means they have pretty much the same shared risk where it says when one link fails, the other links in the group might also fail. See guys, pay attention to the keyword might. They are not saying, okay, it will necessarily fail, but we are making an assumption, okay, hey, if they all belong to a same group where they are sharing potentially like same physical medium or something, there is a good possibility that if one of the link fails, there is a possibility that other links also might fail in that group. They are not saying they will, they have to necessarily fail, but there is a possibility, that's where we are saying, 
they might also fail. So look at there is an assumption here. So what happens in that group if if something of that sort happens? So what it says the TILFA, the SRLG protection, SRLG again shared risk link group protection now will attempt to find the post convergence backup path that excludes the SRLG. Now we are telling the TILFA, hey, you know this link failed. But we are thinking that in this group, there are other links that might also fail. So, you know, when you are doing a path calculation for a backup path, please avoid this fail link as well as all the other links which belongs to this particular group, which we are qualifying as a common group. This is why we are calling the shared risk link group. So, that means we are telling TLFA, you know, hey, yes, you would need to avoid this fail link as well as we would like you to avoid these certain links also from your calculation when you are trying to find a backup path and that is the all idea behind SRLG guys. So now with the SRLG we will attempt to find the post convergence backup path that excludes the SRLG of the protected link means the link that failed that was a protected link as well as any other link that belongs to that group. So all local links that share any SRLG with the protected links are going to be excluded from our calculation. So keeping in that mind, let's go ahead and understand with the help of another diagram. And again, you know, I'm looking at some blog that somebody here written. So it's a pretty nice blog. Credit goes to these guys. So now we know that SRLG is a set of links at the same risk of fault. Okay, that's what we know. If one of the link fails, then we are there is a possibility we are trying to say, okay, hey, the other links might also fail in this uh, group. So if you take a look at in this particular topology, A is the source and F is the destination that we are trying to reach. So now the path that is being picked up right now, it says go to A to C, C to D and D to F. Looks like that is the potential path. We have another path that the system can take. System can go to A to B, B to E, E to D and D to F. Or system can do another path, A to C, C to E, E to D and D to F. There is another path that it can take. It can go to A to B, B to C, C to D and D to F. So there are multiple ways that system can take a path. And if you take a look at right now, the cost for the, the top path is 50. That means the lower path has a default cost of 1. That means this path will be always the preferred path by default initially because this path has a higher cost. So now what happens when the system takes this particular path? So now after reaching from A to C, now C has two potential paths. Obviously C will not go to B because this path has a higher cost. So that means C can either send the traffic to D and then to F or C can decide to send the traffic from C to E, E to D and D to F. So these are the two potential paths we are left with, C to D or C to E. Now what we are trying to tell here that okay, hey, the link between C and D and the link between C and D, C and E and C and D, we are putting them into one SRLG group and that group we are denoting by a numerical value 3. So the SRLG group numbers are denoted by numerical value. So that's what it says, the link between node C to E and node C to D have the same SRLG numerical value configured. When you configure the same numerical value, that means these two links belongs to the same SRLG group. Now what we are saying, okay, hey, all the links except, you know, have the same. So what happens now if there wasn't SRLG configured. Let's say there is no SRLG configured. Okay. And let's say the link, we could say the backup path will be node A, C, E, D, and F. So we are saying, okay, let's say the link between C and D fails. Okay. And there is no SRLG. So in that case, our alternate path would be A to C, C to E, E to D, D to F. Why? Again, because this path is a default metric of 1 versus 50. And that's what we could see from here. Like, okay, hey, if the link between C and D fails without any SRLG, our post convergence path would be A to C, C to E, E to D, and D to F. But now we are making assumption that our links, the link between C and D and the link between C and E belongs to the same SRLG group. That means they share a common risk. So in the common risk, we are saying, okay, hey, if the link between C and D happen to fail, there might be a possibility that we may also lose the connectivity between C and E. So in that case, what happens, we want TLFA not to account definitely this failed link as well as the link 
between this C and E. So I am going to configure the link between C and E and C and D to one SRLG group. So that means we are made of assumption that now when this link fails, when the link fails between C and D, we also said okay the link between C and E belongs to the same group. So do not account or calculate or put this link also in calculation. Simply exclude this link also from the TLFA calculation. So when we have the SRLG in place, this will be the new backup path. So system will altogether will not use the node C to traverse. It will go ahead and now go to A to B. And now it will go ahead and pick the higher path because we said, okay, hey, anyway, this link went down between C and D. So we, this is not a valid path anymore. And we also said the link between C and E belongs to the same SRLG group. So do not include that also. So that means we are left with two paths. A can go to C from C to B, B to E, E to D, D to F. But that becomes a longer path. So they will go to directly to B from B to E, E to D and D to F. So that is the whole idea. In that case, we said, okay, hey, just completely avoid these two links. And that is what guys is called your SRLG group. So within the group, we have these two members or the two links between C and D and C and E, where we made an assumption saying, if the link between C and D go down, there might be a possibility that the link between C and E also went down. So TILFA, when you are doing a calculation, exclude both of those links because they belong to one group. And that group is called shared risk link group. And these SRLG groups are denoted by a number, a numerical value. And that's what you saw. We had initially configured them into be group number three. And that's what happened. So now if you go back to our slide deck and if you take a look at this particular topology, we are saying exactly the same thing. Okay, hey, there is a link between five and six and the link between 5 and 4, we are configuring them into the same SRLG. So that means if either of the link fails, let's say the link between 5 and 4 failed, we made an assumption if the link between 5 and 4 failed, there is a possibility that the link between 5 and 6 also went down. So now we want the TILFA when it's trying to figure a backup path to exclude this particular group. So that means whatever the link that belongs to this group will be excluded by the TLFA. So TLFA will try to figure out a path by avoiding these uh, links which are we are marking them as a potentially failed link. So in this case the source 11 will go to 5, 5 to 1, 1 to 4, to 6, 7 and to definitely 3. And again now continuing with this if you see we can also combine SRLG with the node failure also which is primarily the same thing okay hey you know we are assuming that if there is a node failure we can also go ahead and pick another path. So these are the different mechanism guys. Again, you know, the TLF is all about providing a protection. We can go ahead and protect from a link failure, a node failure or an SRLG failure. Now there are few things that we need to keep in mind. When we configure the TLFA, TLFA uses tiebreaker. TLFA is something called tiebreaker configuration to specify preference of order of protection. You know, which mode we want to go ahead and protect, link, node and SRLG. So now protection mode, preference has interface scope. It is related to interface. So in ISIS also configurable per instance address family. In OSP it is about per instance and per area also. So what it says link protection always have lowest preference means we will go ahead and protect the link at the lowest preference and it is not configurable. OSPF ISIS most preferred has highest index value primarily and we'll go ahead and explore some of these things when we do the hands-on around you know the SRLG. But remember guys, the SRLG is all about, you know, making some assumption that, okay, if one link fail, there is a possibility that some other link might also fail. And when we make that possibility, we try to group those links in a group and that group is called your SRLG group. And they, this is a numerical value. So now the TLF will try to avoid this group completely to figure it out an alternate path from a source to a destination. And that is the whole idea around SRLG. Uh, go ahead and read this again. You can go ahead and download these slides from the segment routing.net. Thanks to these guys again, you know, putting such a wonderful material. Go ahead and read about SRLG on Cisco's official website also. And the next episode, we will go ahead and do some hands-on around the SRLG. That'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.